And certainly I share my achievements on social media. And at the end of the day, there's going to be someone that's better off than you. And there's going to be someone that's worse off than you. And we have to train our brains to run our own race. That comparison is the death of joy. And the only person that you should be is the is being better than the person that you were yesterday. And sometimes that's easier said than done. So I just want to know, like, what do you do throughout the day to stay hyped, right? I mean, I know we're on a podcast and that's always fun and stuff like that. But like, how do you keep this energy going? I have a, I have a few techniques I like doing personally for keeping my energy high. I listen to motivational videos sometimes if I'm not currently making a call. But I'm curious, do you have any techniques, anything? Because I think people can get down sometimes. I think, I think people can get like really like, God damn it. Like, why the hell am I not getting a deal? What is wrong with me, right? Like people can get really, really down on themselves. So I want to know if you know of any techniques where like you can start getting yourself out of a rut or get yourself into the mindset you need, that abundance mindset that you're really talking about right now in order to close some deals and make it make your dreams come true. That's a great question, Jonah. So I'm going to make a book recommendation for everybody. I know I talked about who, not how, but specifically regarding this question, it's called The Miracle Morning. So it's basically own your morning, own your day. So just being able to prime your brain every time that you wake up with wonderful things. And there's an acronym in the book, which is called SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S. So it's silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And I won't go into too much detail about the book, but if, you, if you're a listener to this podcast right now and you don't have a, a somewhat of a morning routine, please, I encourage you to get the miracle morning. So how you start your day is how you just really how it's just, it's just really, it's just a beautiful way to start your day and you set the tone for your day. So this has evolved for me over the last four years, but basically it's my morning routine, like not checking my phone for the first two hours, having that silence because that the, the silence that I have allows me to be a more creative person. You know, as of my morning routine right now, I start with my visualizations in the big the beginning. I drink a, a big glass of water because it jump starts my metabolism. I then do a prayer. I then meditate for 30 to 30 minutes to an hour because meditation just helps. There's just so many benefits to meditation. It helps you become in the present moment, you know, wherever you are, wherever your feet are, it helps you be there. It helps you be present. Real quick. You- how long do you meditate? Sorry. How long do you say you meditate? Sometimes up to an hour. That's crazy. I, the, I, I started, it's so hard for me to go longer than 15 minutes. I try to do 15 minutes, but like, that's, that's impressive. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much. And then I will read a devotional. And then what I started last year is I will take a cold shower and cold showers and cold plunges have become so popular over the last couple of years or so. But what I love about it, Jonah, is because I love that you're, you're able to build the discipline, meaning you know, it's pretty uncomfortable. I live in Michigan. It's winter right now. And the water is, you know, colder, obviously now than it is in the summer. But, you know, Tony Robbins explains it this way when it says, when he he says something along the lines of, when I tell my mind, it's time to go, it's time to go. So I'm building that discipline to say, I'm going to go in this water right now. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to say, I want to, I want to wait a little bit. I'm going to go right now. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to continue to do these challenging things. So that's my morning routine. I've also added a, an evening routine as well, where I'll stop, you know, any blue screen 30 minutes to an hour before going to bed. I will typically read. Uh, I will do my affirmations again. I will do my prayer and I will do my journal, which is the five minute journal, which, which you know, asks, what are the, the three blessings for the day? And what did I learn today? So I think about it. What, what did I learn today? What are my three blessings? Because again, what's wrong is always available. So is what's right. It's a matter of focus. So the five minute journal primes your brain to say, what are the three things? What are the three positive things that happened to you today? So it's developing a robust morning routine. It's an evening routine. And what I want to mention to your listeners and also you is you know, regarding social media, going back to our last question, because I want to encourage your, your listeners to, to use social media. Don't have it use you, meaning post what you need to post, 
maybe engage for five or 10 minutes and get off social media. It's a time suck. It's a time waste. There's just so many situations I've even found myself where you're scrolling for an hour or two a day. You can literally have an iPhone tell you how many how many hours you spend on your phone. Because if you if you post and you engage for 15 or 20 minutes or even yet even a better option, hire someone else to do it for you to engage with your people, with your sphere and go read a book, go engage with someone that's like-minded and do some other things that prime your brain that that put positive things into your mind to help you become the person that you want to become. Because again, when you look at social media for hours a day, there's so many things that can happen. For example, you could go through the comparison game to see, you know, so-and-so has a hundred doors. I only have five or so-and-so sells $20 million per year. And I only sold five or three, whatever it is. And at the end of the day, it's a time waste. Run your own race, celebrate their wins and also encourage them you know, to celebrate them. So it's just all those different things, a morning routine, an evening routine, use social media, don't let it use you, be disciplined and consistent and watch your life change. So I, this is actually a really good question. Usually if people are asking questions in the comments, I save it to the end, but this is actually something really relevant to right now that I want, Ahmad, I want to bring this up. So I want to post things about real estate, but I haven't closed any deals yet. That kind of Put, he means puts me aside not to post or makes him feel like he shouldn't post. What do you say to that? Because I have an idea of what I would say to this, but I, I, I want to hear your response because I think he should post anyways. But what do you think? I think so too. Just because you haven't necessarily closed any deals doesn't mean you can't provide valuable content. So what you can do, Ahmad, is basically print out your purchase agreement wherever you are in the United States or in the world. You could print out your purchase agreement and start to maybe make some videos or some kind of content based on the different components of the purchase agreement. That's number one. Number two is what you can do is, if you think of who your target target client would be, you can tour homes and maybe make some videos to say, this is, I'm touring 123 Smith Street in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I wanna just show everybody this home. This is the price point. This is what you can get for this price point and adding some kind of value because your your people who follow you, they're gonna say, okay, Ahmad, you're, you're touring these homes. You're touring these price points. I'm in that price point. I wanna, I wanna learn more about that area, about that, tip, that type of home, whatever it is. So you can just think of so many ideas where, again, you can create a video based on a home that you're touring even by yourself. You can print out, again, the purchase agreement and you know, utilize chat GPT as well, where you can say, what are a hundred ways that I can add value to my clients as a real estate agent? And you're going to get a hundred answers and you can create a hundred videos. You can create a hundred social media posts, whatever it is. So the, the tools or the, the content is out there. The tools are out there. It's just a matter of like kind of rolling up your sleeves and getting creative, but hopefully those three different kind of ideas inspire you to, to start doing that. Oh, you're, you're muted. I'm muted. I muted myself. Sorry. So I'm going to give my opinion to you also, Ahmad, real quick. And it's you, I think the best thing to do if you're a newbie, like the easiest thing to do at least is live stream, whatever you're doing all day, right? It's, this is harder if you're a real estate agent, because as a real estate agent, you're out and about, you're doing things, you're doing all sorts of stuff. If you're a real estate investor, right. And you're looking for deals, usually that's online. Like what I've started doing is I've started streaming my day, just cuts like me calling people, me doing intro calls, me submitting offers. And people love that. People love learning how to do it. And they don't care if they're watching someone who's newer screw up. In fact, that's probably more useful than it is than if you watch me or Drew close deals, because yes, we know how to do it. But watching a newer person screw up, then you can be like, okay, I see what he did wrong there. And you could be so useful to other people. And also you're going to, you're going to inspire a lot of people to do it as well. And it's going to keep you on your stuff. You, if you do that, you can't, people know you, people are like, once you're, once you're known, you have to stay on it. You can't fall behind. You have to show what you're doing. When you make a public commitment, right? Like if you say, I'm going to live stream for the next five days, you do it publicly. You're so much more likely to do it. There might be days where you don't feel like doing it. You're at your beginning. So you feel like, ah, I can start tomorrow. 
when you really can't start tomorrow if you've told everyone you're starting today, right? So that's what I feel like a lot of people should do a lot more than just not doing it at all. So anywho, that's my opinion, but we can get back. I'll get back to you now, Drew, but that's my opinion on whether newer people should be doing social media or not. Well, so can I, can I stop you there, actually. Yeah, go Thank for you it. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's a great example. One thing I thought about, too, as I heard from a video that I came across from Gary V. And he talked about, you know, if you're, I think he said, if you're a real estate agent or if you're a lender, whatever that is, interview the principal or principals in your area, interview the business owners, the restaurant owners in your area and come up with some really great questions about, you know, why is this the best restaurant in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan? Or tell me, you know, tell me about interviewing these influ or influencers, these these people that are these professionals in your area, like the principal, like the business owners, like the maybe the top real estate, not, maybe not the top real estate agent, but I hope that gives you some ideas where, you know, you can inter interview a superintendent, you can interview the person who owns five coffee shops in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and just, you know, have people associate your name with being a leader in your, in your city, in your town, with being a, a someone that is connected with the superintendent, with the principals, with the local business owners that you're, you're just connecting the dots and you're helping your, when people see that they're associating you with your with your city that you're a leader in your city that you are connected with some of the best people across different industries i love it i love it so much so mm -hmm. back to you Drew. i'm going to get back to you because this is supposed to be your interview this is your podcast right so let's go a little bit into your journey a little bit right i think we've been talking about a lot of inspirational stuff and a lot of and i really like it too but what I like getting into, especially in this podcast, things that like people don't like talking about as much, like really hard experiences, things where it's like, damn, like I'm like, how did we overcome like the dark times, which always come in real estate? They always do. If you're in this business long enough, there's going to be down markets. There's going to be stuff that happens to you in business. Business partners are going to go out. People leave. Things happen, right? It's life. It's business, right? So I want to, if you can, if you don't mind sharing, like an experience of that was like really hard for you in during your real estate journey, like maybe a business breaking up or just a deal going bad or something that really got you down. And how did you overcome that feeling when like something was like really screwing with you or really screwing with your entire business? I think the best example I can give was when I first started in 2018, when a family member decided to go with a different agent. And there's been a couple other examples where, you know, maybe I lost a listing or lost a client as a, as a buyer's agent. Right. And I became very frustrated and it just wasn't, uh, it was something that I was really struggling with at the time where, you know, thinking, why didn't they use me? Why, why, what did I did? What did I do wrong? This is family. And over time, you know, with the personal growth journey that I've been on, I've learned to let that go. And I've learned to realize that what's for me will be for me. And also approaching it as if a, you know, hypothetically, if a, if a agent or excuse me, a, a client in now that maybe they decided to go a different direction, that I'm going to encourage them, I'm going to celebrate them as listing their home or moving forward in the buying process. And what I'm gonna do, for example, if it's a listing that I don't get, I'm gonna try and outwork that listing agent. Meaning for the past five or so years, other than maybe the last year, all real estate agents have had to do is maybe put a, put a post in the yard and you have 10, 15, 20 offers, depending on what area that you're in. You know, Now it's a little bit different, but I'm gonna celebrate that person. I'm gonna celebrate their decision to sell but also I'm going to try and outwork that listing agent because if statistics tell us anything that a homeowner will buy and or sell within the next five or seven years, right? So if I can have the right approach, the proper professional approach to say, congratulations, you know, for moving forward, I'm going to try and find a buyer for your home. Thank you so much for the opportunity to interview, to list your wonderful home. And if they see me working hard on social media, if I'm posting about their home, maybe I do a video about their home, whatever it is, is it reasonable to say that if I outwork that other real estate agent, that I might get an interview in the next five to seven years if I stay in front of that person with social media, whatever it is. But so just really 
having those tough times early in my career of losing a listing or losing a buyer and just really being upset about it versus evolving to the man that I am now to, if that does happen or when that does happen, is celebrating that person, realizing that that client is not for me and it's God's protection of you know, not, not just working with that client for whatever reason that I might never know and celebrating that person working harder than that other agent to maybe to try to get an interview in the next, you know, five to seven years with, or when that person maybe considers selling and or buying. So it's just, that was a tough time, you know, because again, the comparison game is real, especially with, you know, social media. And certainly I share my achievements on social media and at the end of the day, there's going to be someone that's better off than you. And there's going to be someone that's worse off than you. And we have to train our brains to run our own race. That comparison is the death of joy. And the only person that you should be is the is being better than the person that you were yesterday. And sometimes that's easier said than done. But again, going back to the, my original comment, just letting that go, celebrating other people's decisions to move forward in the real estate's as a real estate sale or purchase and thinking about how can I add more value, even though I didn't get the listing or I didn't get the client. I love it. And then I also like, this is just something that I'm thinking about like right now is when this is just something interesting that like I've noticed and it's just because you mentioned it and it's like something that I like really find interesting about real estate in general is people's levels of religiosity or like how much like their faith inspires them. Like you, you just said the word, like, it's like, the, the man that God made me today, right? And I'm somewhat religious, but I've noticed this as like a pattern in real estate where like people, I like some of the greatest people that I know or like most of my mentors are pretty religious people and they like definitely do things like either go to church or like have a strong faith in God. And I'm just curious, like for you, how has that affected your real estate journey, like having faith and all of that type of stuff? Or if you don't have faith or if it was just like a turn of phrase, I don't know, but. No, no, it definitely wasn't. And certainly part of who I am today is is through God and just going through situations where I had pride uh, to be, to be honest with you, Jonah and, and, you know, your listeners where I thought I can do it all. I, I thought I could do this, this, and this, and I've been proven wrong with um, some different situations in my life where, you know, I go to Jesus, I go to God and, and it's a big part of my life. And it's just given me so much more peace where I don't have to do everything on my own. I don't have to try and figure everything out on my own that in God's timing, God's timing is perfect. And, you know, just leaning into him and developing a friendship and a relationship with him where it's going to be in his timing. It's going to be in his timing if, Honestly, if, if he wants me to switch gears, if he feels that my gifts, my strengths are, are, are maybe used or could be used in a different industry, whatever that is. And just like having that peace and just, you know, speaking those words and, you know, connecting with other Christians and like-minded people to just realize that, you know, it's okay if, if I'm not the real estate agent for you or the real estate investor, whatever that is, it's, it, that's okay. And, and letting, letting people pleasing go and just letting perfection go and just, just really becoming the man that God has called me to be and leaning into my strengths. You know, John Maxwell, who I didn't mention earlier, John Maxwell is another unofficial mentor that has helped me so much in my communication, but just, he always talks about leaning into your strengths. So it's just really, it's given me so much peace over the years. It's been a journey. I'm not, I'm not perfect at it. And, and just like I mentioned about communication, it's, it's something, it's a skill, it's a relationship that you evolve over time and how you do that is being consistent and disciplined by feeding your mind, by reading devotionals, by going to church, by surrounding yourself with like-minded men and women of faith or of self-improvement. And I don't tell people what to believe spiritually, but, you know, I'm here to have that conversation if, if, and when they, they want to have that about, you know, being a Christian and, and everything that comes with that. And so it's just, it's given me so much peace and it's allowed me, it's really opened so many doors for me. You know, for example, I don't, I don't share this for a pat on my back, but one of the things I started last year was tithing 10% and just doing that. And I've, I've never done that before in my life. And when I did that, my just my business, it's it's already been successful, but it really took off from the middle of the year to the end of the year where I I can hit, I can say I hit my 
through God, because of his grace, I hit a sales record in 2023. And this is not me tuning my own horn. This is just me being transparent to you and your listeners where, you know, I'm, I'm giving the Lord 10% of my top, top line income and I'm being faithful and I'm being a good steward of the money that I have and, and just praying about it and determining where that 10% whether it's a church, goes to a church, whether it goes to an organization, whether it goes to a specific person, just these certain kinds of things and just having the faith that that money is going to go to someone or an organization or a church that's really going to help them with what they're trying to do. So it's just, it's given me this peace and it's, it's significantly helped me as a man, as a brother, as a, as a leader, as a communicator, as a man of faith. And it's just continues to compound and I've developed so much momentum in my life. And part of my, part of my purpose, part of my passion, Jonah, is to really help, really help other people. You know, I, one of my favorite ways to say it is helping people see their potential before they can see it in themselves. And I believe that's why I've been put on this earth to help them see that, you know, but my, this is a long way of answering, you know, the, my faith is a huge part of my life. And I, I spend quite a bit, quite a bit of time on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis to try and learn and grow down that faith journey. I love it. I love it so much. So I, I'm i trying something new. This is going to be something new that I haven't done on any other Sports of Fears episode. It's been something I've been interested in doing is taking some questions from the audience. So Ahmad has been asking you an insane amount of questions. So I'm going to start putting some up here. I'm going to have you answer a few of them. And then, yeah, we're just going to see it from there. And I will do my final question and then we'll wrap it up. But What's the best way do you feel like to overcome the fear of public speaking? How do you really believe in yourself and convince your inner self the what it takes to be a great wholesaler? If you don't know, most of my audience, I, what I do is wholesaling. That's my main business model. So a lot of my audience has to do with wholesaling, right? But to be a great agent, to be a great investor, to be a great anything, like what's your, what would you be your answer to this? So the, the first, the first part of the question is overcome public speaking. And my best response is to do it. So that could mean raising your hands in a room of, of a couple people. That could be giving a toast or whatever it is, just continuing to build those good reps. Because is it reasonable to say that if you pursue the fears, you pursue what you're fearful of, for example, public speaking, um, how, about, how about reaching out to uh, someone who has a podcast to get on a podcast to just speak and you know preparing for it? So like, if you give a speech or whatever that is in public speaking, prepare for it. Prepare for it by saying the speech 100 times in front of the mirror, whatever that looks like. Because if you're prepared, you typically are going to do pretty well. And you just build you build it by building these reps and, and putting yourself out there and being okay if you bomb, if you have a challenging time, whatever it looks like, because you are pursuing your fears. And in my experience, not a lot of people will do it. So if I can encourage you and inspire you would be just to start building those reps. For example, I think of an organization called Toastmasters. So Google Toastmasters in your area, where it's a great organization where you get in front of people, you give a speech, you do what's called table topics. I'm a part of Toastmasters. And you start to build those good reps. And all of a sudden, you're going to become you know, more familiar with it. You're going to become more comfortable with it. So I would start there, go to Toastmasters, and continue to put yourself in position or in situations where you can start doing it. If it's uncomfortable, that's okay. Pursue the things that you're fearful of and just continue to you know, pursue it on a regular basis because it's reasonable to say that if you continue to do it, you're going to come out of that a different version of yourself. So I would say just continue to do it, start and build those good reps. And then I lost, what was the second question, Jonah? My apologies. Sorry. No, it's okay. Hold on. It's just how to believe in yourself, basically. So you have to have this just uh, absolute certainty about where you're going. And most of us have limiting beliefs and it could be limiting beliefs as a wholesaler, as a real estate agent, as someone that wants to get into relationships. So you have to be, number one is to become aware of your limiting beliefs. Awareness is step number one. And step number two is eradicating those limiting beliefs and building those good reps of what I just mentioned. So like going into public speaking, starting to do it. Another example is just being able to pursue uh, the things that you're fearful of. I'll give you an example. We talked about the cold showers, right? So a lot of people won't do that, right? If you're uncomfortable with it, 
I encourage you to do it anyways, because again, you're going to come out of that a different person because you build self-confidence by doing challenging things. So I'd be thinking about what are, what are you afraid of? What is something that is just will give you a lot of discomfort and pursue it? Because again, you build your self-confidence by doing challenging things. I'll give you an example. I went and saw Tony Robbins in November of 2022 at an event called Unleash the Power Within. And after day one, he has us walking on hot coals. I think he said it's 2000, 2000 degrees on your bare feet. You think about this is this is crazy, but he builds us up just like how Jonah and I are trying to build you guys up right now. But he builds us up and then we walk bare feet on the hot coals. And then once you walk across that, you think about, wow, if I can walk on coals bare feet, 2000 degrees, what else am I capable of? What else am I, is my mind holding me back? What other limiting beliefs do I need to eradicate from my mind and fill myself up with things that I know I'm capable of doing, of having absolute certainty that I can do it? So I would say doing hard things to build your self-confidence and whatever you're fearful of, you should be pursuing that on a regular basis. I love it. I love it so much. So my man, we're getting close to the end of this, right? And I always end these podcasts with a single question that I really like asking, which is if you could go back to yourself, right? When you were starting in real estate, what would you do then knowing, or what would you tell yourself then knowing everything that you know now? The biggest thing I think of, and I've been thinking about this quite often, I literally, I think I said it today, but I tried to do everything myself. You know, I looked at, I tried to find the brokerage that had the lowest commission cap. And uh, I know you mentioned there's mostly wholesalers and different things like that, but I looked at cost versus return. And going back to Tony Robbins, proximity is power. He talks about modeling people who are doing the things that you want to do in your life. So if we're talking about wholesaling, how can I reach out to the best wholesaler in my area or even outside of my area? And how can I learn the processes what he or what this person, what he or she has done and model what they're doing instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. I've tried to reinvent the wheels for the last you know five and a half years. I've made some really good progress. I've had a ton of achievements in my life, but I've quite, uh, quite frankly, I've, I've tried to, to do everything myself and I've tried to figure everything out myself. And don't look at things from a cost perspective, looking at it from how can I 10x or 25x this conference, this mentorship, what this person is telling me, because this person has a track record of being the best wholesaler in the industry, the best real estate agent in the industry, whatever it is, or, you know, if it's relational, you know, whatever it is. So modeling someone who is already doing the things that you want to do and looking at it, not from a cost perspective, but looking at how can I 10x, how can I 25x what this person has shown me because they have that proven track record. I love it. I love it so much. So we're getting to the end. I want real quick, Ahmad was asking, and obviously I wanted you to share it, was just like, what's your socials? Where can people reach out to you? You're mainly doing Michigan, right? So I don't know if there's a way that like real estate investors can help you, maybe send you deals to list, maybe send you, you know, like maybe there's some deals that like my team wants or, or not my team, but my fan base wants to wholesale that you could help them find a buyer. I don't know. But how can people reach out to you, do deals with you, all that good stuff? I appreciate that. You can you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Drew Denham Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook. You can search Drew Denham. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'm spelling that it, right, right? I, I'm pretty sure I'm spelling it right. Yes, but I believe, there, I believe there's dots after Drew and Denham in real estate. But if you type in if you type in Drew Denham, I'm pretty sure that it comes up. But, okay, um, cool. Ahmad wants to sub. He likes you. Ahmad's a, Ahmad's a new fan. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Ahmad. Thank you so. Thank you for the the great questions. But honestly, guys, guys and gals, if if you have deals in Michigan, if you have someone that's a retail buyer in Michigan, you know, I cover a couple different areas in Michigan. I have a, a pretty unique business model as a real estate agent. So if, if you have someone that's looking in Michigan, I'd love to help them myself or either connect them with another great agent within Michigan. If you have any investment properties, you know, really in Michigan, I'd love the opportunity to work with you, you know, whether that's, you know, a wholesale deal or maybe even potential partnership, if that's a good fit. 
And you know, I appreciate I appreciate those questions. I'm I'm really my main buy box is I would say single family homes, but actually mainly would be a rental or a multifamily homes. So large um, multifamily properties, single family homes, but really I'm open to to mixed use, commercial, whatever it is. I love it. Do you have any last words, anything you want to end this with, with the audience before I wrap this up? I would say continue. uh, I know I mentioned it a handful of times, but continue to pursue the things that you're fearful of. Give life everything that you have. Don't leave anything on the table. Put, you know, make a focus of your morning routine, your evening routine. 10% of your income should go towards your personal growth. And your level of communication will parallel the level of your success. And when I say success, I think of mental health, physical health, your spirituality, your business, whatever it is. So focus on communication and look at it as a journey. Give yourself grace and just continue to move forward and become the best version that you can. Okay. I have one last thing I want to add though. I actually want to ask you another (laughs) question because you mentioned it because this is really good and this is really relates to the topic of the podcast. You said pursue the things that you're afraid of. I think I I agree with you. I think that's like where purpose comes from because what you're afraid of, usually that's where the goal lies. That's where everything that you want is on the other side of that. I was just curious though, like why do you say that? Is there any specific reason, like specifically the things that you fear? Because I think everything that person, my personal belief is everything we want is on the other side of that. But I'm curious if that's why you said that or if there's another reason. I, I would echo what you've said, Jonah. We're, we're, we'll become different versions of ourselves on the other side of that. And just, you know, eradicating again, those limiting beliefs, going back to the Tony Robbins, uh, coal walk to the cold showers to, you know, I did a, a 21K obstacle course in West Virginia, just like pushing myself to these limits that I've never reached before. And again, it's just, you unlock something in your mind to say again, if I can do this, what else can I do? Am I self-sabotaging myself as a wholesaler because of maybe I'm comparison or comparing myself to other people, or maybe I just, the words that I say, maybe I'm saying I don't have the money or means necessary to start a business or another common thing that I've heard in the last couple of years. Maybe you've heard this too, Jonah, of deals don't exist in this market. Let me, let me prove it to you how that's not the case, right? So it's just, you pursue the things that you're fearful of. You come out of that a whole different person and you unlock, you unleash the opportunity that's in front of you. And I just think, It's just a beautiful way to live. And not only will you improve as an individual, but you also can help other people who are struggling with that and help them get to where they want to go. I love it. I love it so much. (laughs) This was fun, man. You were a great guest. I appreciate you. Luke, are you in, you're in Minnesota. Never mind. Michigan, Minnesota. I was like, I, one of my, one of my friends who watches a lot of my stuff, I was like, I think he's in Michigan, but he's in Minnesota. I get confused. Sorry. But you were a great guest, Drew. You did awesome. I love this. Guys, next week will be Scorch the Fears. Next week, cash flow and coffee. Nothing cr- there will be no cash flow and coffee next week. I am gonna be in Florida, Jacksonville, guys. I'm doing a meetup in Jacksonville. I'm going to a mastermind and afterwards I'm doing a meetup. So if you guys are in Jacksonville, come hang out. It's gonna be a fun time. I would love to meet all of you guys. And Drew, thank you so much. You were awesome. This is Scorch of Fears episode 112 we're out let's freaking go